Hello, welcome to episode 69 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 6th of June. I hope you all had a lovely May um, and I'm going to share all the crafty things that I've been up to um, in the last week since I last podcasted. So today I'm going to show you some knitting, um, some macrame for a change, I haven't done that in a little while, and some bobbin lace, an update on what my bobbin lace project, how that's coming along. I've got a blast from the past, which is one of my nanny's dresses, again to show you. I've got a gadget, um, and I've got my, my usual confessions. Not too bad, there's just one thing, and, and it was a bargain from eBay, so that's fine. And I've got some information on my shop update just at the end of the podcast if you want to um, hear about that. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook and on my website Craft House Magic. Um, links to my website are down below where you can find show notes um, and things that are for sale on my shop that are basically knitting related, things I've handmade. Um, we have a couple of sort of craft alongs going on at the moment. We've got the spring shawl along, which I'm doing as a collaboration with Caroline from the Love to Sew podcast. Hi, Caroline! <laughs> and we've been making some shawls and lots of people have joined in, so that's been lovely. So you can find links to Caroline's website and her Ravelry group in my show notes, which is on my website, crafthousemagic.co.uk. And on the left hand side in the menu bar, there's a link to show notes there. So in my Ravelry group, we're doing a discussion thread and in Caroline's Ravelry group, we're doing the finished objects thread. So don't forget to get your finished objects over in Caroline's thread um, before the end of June. We also have the summer sock along coming soon. So I think I'm going to start that on the 16th of June. Um, and I think any sock can be included, whether it's sort of a lacy short sock or a longer sock, it's fine just as long as it's an adult size sock that'll be lovely to see what you'll be knitting and there's so many lovely sock patterns out there so I'll be looking forward to seeing what you're knitting them with and what pattern you're using so that I think will end the end of August I think probably just to give you plenty of time to get those socks done and there'll be a discussion thread and a finished objects thread as well but I haven't opened those yet because it's not till the 16th. So we've still got 10 days. I'll have another podcast up before I open that thread. Um, last thing I need to just talk about is just to remind everybody that I'm doing a Norwich meetup on the 21st of July. And details of, of that are in the show notes and also in the Ravelry group as well, the Craft House Magic one. Right, whew, got all that bit over. Let's talk about the crafty stuff. So let's start with the knitting section. I've actually got some proper, proper finished objects today, which I'm pleased about. So I showed you my Vertices Unite last week, um, almost complete. I've just finished it off with some I-cord all around the edge, which I think finishes it off nicely. I don't suppose you can see much difference when it's sort of hung like this. Um, but there we are. I've blocked it. I'm sure it is slightly bigger. It's a little bit creased because I've had it folded up. That's a bit of a shame. Um, but I'm really pleased with how that's come out. And I'll just show you a little bit closer that how that I-cord really just neatens up the edge there. And I think it brings the rest of the colours together, um, having the grey around the edge, really. Let's show you how that colourway looks against the grey. So there we go. So this is the Vertices Unite Shawl by Stephen West. Um, and the yarns I used are all my own hand-dyed yarns. Let's see if I can remember their names. <laughs> this sort of beige coloured background with the pink and coral speckles is Dress You Up. Um, then I have this one here, which is a corally base with some blue speckles, is um, Only You. We have, the thing is I've striped some of these colourways, so this darker grey is Living on a Prayer, and this is striped again with the Dress You Up colourway, so if you look carefully you can see that beigey base with the pinks and corally pinks there. Um, I have also got You Can't Hurry Love and that's a sort of pinky colour with some grey and darker speckles in there and then lastly which I've done the I cord bind off with that one's Here Comes the Rain again hopefully that's focusing on reasonably well and I actually striped that with Living on a Prayer to get this nice stripey bit there so I think 
I'm really pleased with how those colours have come together actually and it's quite huge so I try it on again I tried it on last week didn't I so just showing you the same thing <laughs> there we go so you can't get better than a bit of garter stitch really uh, for a bit of squishiness and the yarn base that I picked was my Stellina base so there we go so that's one finished object and I went crazy with the i-cord because I'd done round this I was on a roll on a roll with the i-cord <laughs> and I decided to have an i-cord marathon I'm just going to take this off so I can show you the next one on me so I actually got around to picking up my um, northeasterly scarf so I did I don't know if, if you've been watching a little while you'll know that I did a northeasterly sort of blanket pattern but turned it into a scarf and I did four rows and that's doubled over to make it quite long um, and then I decided that it needed some i-cord edging so I finished it off with some i-cord edging there um, quite a few people have been asking me about how I do my i-cord and whether I do a tutorial so I shall be recording either this afternoon or tomorrow morning I shall be recording one of those to share with you all the things I've picked up um, when I've been doing these i-cord edgings um, just so it helps you guys get on with your shawls because it's all related to the uh, spring shawl along as well and this is how I intend to wear this one wrapped around my neck because I did so I've done the um, the main part of the um, blanket or scarf <laughs> with 2.75 millimeter needles with all my little scraps, and the northeasterly pattern is by Skin Alligans by Melissa. I can't remember Melissa's surname. I'm sorry, Melissa. But I shall pop um, Melissa's full details in the show notes if you wanted to find that. And then I've just gone round and done I cord all the way around. But for this blanket, I've actually used a larger needle. I used um, 3.5 millimetre needles just so that I didn't have to concentrate too much on keeping the stitches loose. I shall talk a bit more about that um, sort of things I modified in the tutorial. So watch out for that. So there we go. We have another finished object. I've got it on the wonky. Let's get it straight. <laughs> so I think that'll be nice and warm. Um, to wear in when it gets a bit cooler. I've I've actually been knitting big chunky things, um, shawls wise, and then they're not really for this time of year. But you can never have too many cosy things, can you? <laughs> Even when it's quite warm. So those are my first finished objects for today, and then I've got a couple of works in progress which I'm going to go show you. So because we've got an extension of the shawl along till the end of June. I had to cast another shawl on. <laughs> so last week I showed you that I'd, I think I'd done about two rows um, of this pattern and it, it's the Hloenid I'd say and it's by Isolde. So I picked it up from Edinburgh Yarn Festival, uh, the pattern and the yarn and that's what it's going to look like and I, in the pattern the actual yarn that's called for is Garthanor, I think it's number three. No, number two. I'm not quite sure exactly what that yarn is. Let's have a look. Um, it's 100% Shetland that they've used and the one, the yarn that I decided to place, replace it with was this Sol J which I can't pronounce there we go um, and I, this is 100% wool but I'm not quite sure what type of um, you know I, I don't know if it's Shetland or Hebridean or whatever type of sheep because I basically can't understand <laughs> the label properly but it's definitely a hundred percent wool rather than it's a non-super wash so I picked the most gorgeous tealy colour it's funny because this sort of teal it it photographs a little bit differently sometimes on the photographs I think that's pretty accurate of how it looks in real life so that's good sometimes it looks slightly bluer and sometimes slightly greener but equally as gorgeous so this is how far I've got so far so I've got um, quite a long length of stitches there I think I started with nearly 200 but that you are reducing a little bit as you go on because it's a sort of triangle shape um, there's some really nice cables coming out there I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show this very well on the screen but you can see those cables are just starting to come out um, there we go 
I'll just show you the photograph again so you can sort of see how it relates to the pattern. So I am about there. So hopefully by the next week I'll get I'll have gotten this piece finished so that I can get onto the bit where I don't have to concentrate as much. Because I do like a bit of knitting where I don't have to think too much about it and I can chat along or watch the TV. So that's my first work in progress. And I have a second work in progress, which is a bit boring really, because I was knitting on this a couple of weeks ago. But I've done a little bit more. So this is my massive sock tube that I've been knitting just when I need to just absolutely do no thinking whatsoever and just knit. Because sometimes that's what what you need a bit of just complete stress relief <laughs> when you can you just can't even be bothered to think about anything so this lovely yarn is gorgeous it's a twisted limone base that I picked up a little while ago and I was saving it and I thought do you know what I'm just gonna knit, knit this to cheer me up so that's that's her label for Twisted Limone. And the colour is Neon Splash. Um, and this is her 7525 Self Striping Sock Yarn. Um, and it's 100 grams, it's 464 yards. So it's so nice to just enjoy these beautiful gobstopper balls. Lovely. I know how much time it takes to wind those things up. And it just is such a pleasure to knit from something so beautiful. So that how, that's how I've got on so far. There's some beautiful bright neon speckles and with pink and white stripes there. So I think that I'm just going to knit right till the end of the ball, use up every scrap of yarn because we don't like to waste <laughs> and make those into a couple of pairs of socks I think. Um, so there we go, that's all my knitting works in progress. I have some other things to show you though. So let's start with the macrame first. So I've had in my mind that I needed a macrame plant hanger for a plant that I have just next to me here. I haven't actually hung it up yet and I can actually show you a bit better I suppose. So I've had this plant next to me in my craft room for a little while and I felt that it needed to be hung up to show its true potential really and I thought macrame plant hanger would be perfect so I picked a tutorial from YouTube I have done macrame once before but not for absolutely ages so I had to use a YouTube video just to remind me what will we do without YouTube <laughs> I will pop a link to the tutorial in my show notes um, if you want to find that the one that I actually followed um, I'll see if I can get this closer to the camera. So there's a shorter bit of the standard stitch here. And then there's the half square knot, which makes these twisted sections there. Um, and then there's some knots that alternate around the bottom of the pot just to hold it in place. And I basically used just some really, really cheap string. But I think that that's quite effective. And I, this bowl is actually an old bowl, cereal bowl sort of thing that I've repurposed as a plant pot. <laughs> so there we go. I'm in the process of making another one. So hopefully next week I'll be able to show you the second one of those and hopefully get them hung up um, by the window so that I can actually show you them in situ where they're supposed to go. <laughs> right, so I've also been doing some bobbin lace this week. I hadn't worked on it for ages and I thought I'm really going to have to finish this but I didn't realise how close I was to finishing it and I did get round to getting all the actual um, bobbin lace itself done but now I've got quite a lot of work to get it mounted so I chose this pattern to go on my wall in my bathroom I don't know how easy it's going to for me to show you this because there's so many ends to weave in. So I've unpinned it from the bobbin lace cushion and there's a ridiculous amount of ends. So many in fact you can't really see what the work looks like probably. <laughs> so I will pop a picture up here of what it looked like before I unpinned it so that might be a better sort of gauge of what it actually looks like. And this is the pattern that it came from so you can see that it's sort of um, a leafy flowery pattern um, that sort of bends over but I've got to get rid of so many ends. Normally you'd weave those ends into the actual work but because I'm mounting it I'm going to cheat and I'm going to actually weave those into the back of some felt and then mount it in a picture um, so that should be a little bit easier rather than trying to thread 
those very silky threads through the actual work it would be a nightmare <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do I'm really not looking forward to sewing those ends in these leafy bits as well keep um, flopping down so I'm going to have to be really careful when I sew those into a bit of felt um, and I need to decide on what background material, what colour to use which shows up um, the different colours that I've used in the piece. So the threads I used were a silk thread, I should stop messing around with this so it doesn't get too tangled. Let's, let's put it to one side Ellie <laughs> are a silk thread um, so they're harder to work with when, than the cotton threads I normally use um, but I seem to get the hang of it it wasn't too bad they're a little bit slippy so I had to use a couple of um, loops over, over the end of the bobbins instead of just one um, and I ought to show you what pattern it's from let me just grab the book so this is the book that I actually used and the actual front piece is the piece that I've chosen to have a go at. So I'm hoping that it'll look something like that when it's finished. Um, there are a load of other lovely pictures in here as well. So um, I might have a go at another one someday. But there was a lot of leaves in this piece. So I'm hoping to pick one with less leaves in. <laughs> so these are quite interesting. Different sort of abstract shapes of bobbin lace just to make a change from just the normal standard torsion that I tend to do but there we go so that's my bobbin lace I'm hoping that next week maybe I have I've got plans to do some actual quilting this weekend though so hopefully maybe next week or the week after I'll have had an attempt at mounting my bobbin lace and I shall show you how I get on I also need to sort another project um, to start for my next bobbin lace project so I like to keep one bobbin lace project because if I have too many there's too many other things I like to have a go at as well <laughs> so that's all the sort of projects that I'm working on and we've got a blast from the past to show next so Barbara can you come over thanks Barbara so Barbara's wearing another one of my nanny's dresses um, this pattern is exactly the same as the garment I showed last week except that she's used the same fabric throughout and I think it looks really effective as well. So this fabric um, isn't stretchy at all so I did find actually getting it on Barbara was a bit of a squeeze <laughs> and you'll see when you, I turn around she's a little bit tight so um, my nanny was really tiny. Um, and Barbara is sort of the larger size and I've actually screwed her so she's the skinnish, skinny as she could possibly be and she still doesn't fit but never mind you get the idea anyway um, there's lovely darts around the bust shaping and I love this sort of shape of these different pieces here I think that looks really lovely they're full length sleeves um, and I don't know, I can't remember whether this is slightly different to last time but the neckline is actually bound um, rather than faced at all I think that's a really nice different um, feature and I noticed that she'd used again some lovely um, bias binding tape just to finish off the bottom of the skirt there and I just give such a nice um, finish when it's finished really nicely and you can see that it's sort of hand stitched on as well and now you can see how much Barbara won't fit in <laughs> oh don't look so there's a, a zip around the back again and there's some really nice waist darts um, around the neck and around the waist as well and again it's one of the sort of um, A-line skirts that goes just past the knee I think it's a shame I can't try it on really so how's she done the sleeves so she's just hand stitched um, that material down there which is beautiful I thought I'd show you this a little bit closer there's some really nice 40 year old hand stitch in there that's the cuffs and actually most of the body is overlocked so again she must have borrowed an overlocker off somebody um, to finish that off um, and you can see the lovely way the darts are sewn really neatly so that's another one of Nanny's dresses. I really like this colour. It's quite a polyester feel of material, so I think it would probably be quite warm um, and a bit sweaty for me. But um, Oh, I just noticed as well, there's some darts where the elbows go. I think that's quite a sweet little effect. 
It's a shame Barbara hasn't got arms so you can't see properly. <laughs> but there you go, that's another one of Nanny's dresses to show you. Um, Barbara's ran off naked over there. <laughs> Bye Barbara! <laughs> oh dear. I hope I don't scare you with my dreadful sense of humour. <laughs> So now I'm going to show you my gadget for this week. So as it's the beginning of the month, I'm trying to include a gadget um, just to make a slightly longer episode. And my gadget for June is the Coco Coco Knits um, stitch holder set, um, which my lovely friend Terry gave me. I'm pretty sure it was Terry who gave me these. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I'm pretty sure it was Terry though. So it's a, a little set of these leather cords that you can use to hold your st your stitches on when you're knitting. So say you need to just put them on waist yarn, rather than putting on waist yarn, if you use this leather cord it makes it a bit easier because it comes with these sort of mini little needles um, that you can actually pull off um, but it makes it easier than having to thread them onto scrap yarn, so I think that's quite useful. There are three sets of cord in the kit, um, and it says on the back actually that there's a one there's one long one for holding stitches on the sweater on like a sweater body, um, and it's 150 centimeters long. And then there's two shorter ones that are 75 centimeters long, and they suggest it's used for sleeves, but you can use them for anything really. Um, but I know that it's a pain because you have to sort of thread waste yarn onto an, uh, like a sewing needle and these um, sort of push on needles that go onto the um, leather cord really easily um, are really useful so I think that's really um, a nifty idea really so I Terry is from America but I, th I think this is an American company but I do think that you can get hold of cocoa and its stuff in the UK because I've seen them at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and things so I'm not quite sure um, there must be some suppliers in the UK somewhere. If I find one, I'll put them in the show notes as well. I'm sure I'll, sh I'll be able to find that for you. And it does come in a beautiful little drawer. And it's quite a nice little sturdy box there um, that you can store it away. So it doesn't get sort of lost. I think that's really sweet. And it's I really like the sturdiness of the box as well. So that's a lovely gadget for this week. <laughs> So I have just got confessions and a little information on my shop update. So what did I buy? Do you know, I haven't actually been too bad lately. <laughs> Hopefully I won't have anything for next week. <laughs> it's because we've been on holiday and I've had to not spend as much money because we spent a fortune. Um, but I wanted to pick up this simplicity pattern and it's one of Nanny's dresses. And my, one of the ladies, Elizabeth, said this is the pattern. I was like, oh, I need to go and get this. I don't know whether it's actually in print anymore, but I managed to get a second-hand copy off eBay for about £4, including postage, which was lovely. So the number is the K3833. And I don't know if you'll really be able to see on the line drawings on the front or the, the coloured drawings. Um, but there's an interesting sort of bust dart and shaping um, in well view A uh, which is similar to the one that my nanny made I've just got the garment on a hanger here to show you so this is the pattern I thought that those darts were really interesting so I thought I'd pick up one for myself as well I'm going to see if I can replicate so I'm going to have a go at that at some point obviously I'll need to do a bust adjustment etc um, which is a bit annoying it just it's time consuming that's the only thing you just have to set the day and I'm going to just do it. This is what I'm having to tell myself. The trouble is, the time goes so quickly and you don't get to do all the things you want to do. Just try and do my best. <laughs> anyway, I'm waffling on now. Um, so the last section is shop update. If you don't want to give, give that a listen, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you next week. I just wanted to mention that I'm going to have some more dragonfly bags um, that I showed you on last week's episode, along with the scissor cases and uh, notions pouches, etc. I'm just topping those up in the shop. Um, and I'm not actually having an official shop update. Um, I've just... Um, I've listed some more by the end of this podcast they'll be back up there um, so that you can go and look in the shop. I'm also planning on doing some new larger bags so watch out for those. I'm just waiting for some fabric to arrive that I've ordered especially 
but they're taking a bit longer than normal so hopefully that'll turn up soon um, and I think that's it for this week so thank you so much for watching I've got a bit of dodgy hair going on today <laughs> I think it's a little bit wet and these bits have just dried a little bit more at the front so I look a bit of a funny shaped head oh dear <laughs> thank you so much for watching again I'm going to say it again because I'm addicted to saying this don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you next week bye